What's going down, AMD family? Today, we have a brand new update. 20.11.3 comes to us, which is very interesting because I got it yesterday. It came through the line wire on the 30th. It said it was unidentified for the date. Then on top of that, when it installed, it said it installed on the 25th or was available. And I was like, wait, I'm so confused. Um, so my name is Mac. We're at the MacGyver 7 channel. We're going to get past that confusion. We're going to get some new benchmarks to community suggestion boards kind of lit up with some suggestible points to make it more realistic in the portion of seeing if the driver to driver is improving on like that. So thank you. Cheers. I appreciate that. But let's go ahead and take a look directly what has been changed on the ink to pixels as we look at what and no is the actual situations of AMD's new driver few things to point out before we start to continue past that is I noticed that there is a brand new standard now they're repping that 20.11.2 which is the recommended which would make sense they made a leap towards the 6000 series so hopefully with a lot of the older cards they have been aging like fine wines I love to hear the community's feedback on how they're operating on their current system and what are the I guess bells and whistles that you're having with certain games. When the community speaks, we all start to recognize what are the issues. This fine wine can age well together. Uh, but looking at past that of what we have, there also is a brand new adrenaline software for the enterprise. So I have been slacking apparently, and I need to stop it. So there's gonna be a lot of cooler content coming towards that, but let's go ahead and dive in the technicalities. Hot and fresh comes in to us for what is gonna be going for support in certain Vulcan ray tracing extensions, which is kind of cool, but we are seeing some feedback that it's not going to be on Cyberpunk. Kind of a bummer. They are not enabling situation well, at least day one, and I'm pretty sure AMD will rectify that. They're really cool with that, but NVIDIA out the door will definitely be getting a nice edge to those glimmers with all those RTX cards that are just mining, apparently not with the gamers, but I have heard some people getting those. I mean, uh, I can get community comments what has anyone got a 6000 series i'm really curious like and is it boss i want to know if it had some bad attitude leave a comment down below the immortals and rising also come into a standpoint but the vulcan support also hits a pipeline so we're going to get some fragmented shading for the rates the accelerated structures the trace pipelines ray cues also some awesome host operation and like all these will have the technicalities down below if you want to go ahead and get these links as we scroll down and see the library pipeline also gets a complete new portion alongside with the shader and the terminant for the invocalization now fixes which is the more important thing i like to think from week to week as we want to kind of see what's happening is like what's going on with the 6000 series and it makes the list when dirt 5 and in watchdogs legions the 6000 series was not producing it was experiencing some um, well lower than expected performance hopefully that's been rectified and i'm curious to hear if that has been a situation that people have noticed on top of that the lower portions of performance and the experience in the radeon were the 5000 down to 500 and 400 which 500 and 5000 have been a common situation that i've seen on the comment board uh, so hopefully it's something that they're persistently giving more updates for when it comes down to godfell alongside with that they also have an in-detected list on the Radeon software for the gaming tab. So now that has been rectified. So Godfell made the list twice as so we kind of push past the Crisis Remastered. Also has a corruption portion where the characters on the Radeon 6800s and the graphics cards and were producing very... <laughs> It's like the winning stages of ray tracing and the new technology that is filtering out there. It's exciting though, and this is what technology is needed for. A fix inside of the immersive points of crashes and total war in the saga of Troy, where the world of Warcraft and the shadowing also comes down to the portion where the launched API is on DirectX 12 on Windows 7. That has been rectified, hopefully. On top of the fixes were the portions of the crashes with Black Ops coming into the DirectX ray tracing and enabling. Now you can finally have it enabled as we go down to the HDR in Windows 10. It might be disabled for as far as the Doom and portions of the internal of HDR mode. Very nice when you're wanting to save your pixel for pixel with a nice color. Looking at that for as far as issues on, I found Adobe Illustrated, um, the Premiere also has the now final wire on the ADI A64. 
The fixed corruption on the issues of Red Dead Redemption is now finally hopefully resolved with the 1080p with the resolution of the 6800 with the production of that. And it does look really good. I've been playing my PlayStation 5. And I know it's kind of like lightweight AMD technology. Yeah, I kind of got a 6800. It's called a 68 PS5. That's right. Kind of next gen, last gen, you know, rise in. Anyways, moving on. That's not a wrap. Because my name is not the hip hopopotamus and my lyrics are definitely not bottomless. But looking on past that, there's known issues out here, everyone. And go ahead and take a time to adjust to your portions. You can always, like, if you need to, pause and take a look at this. As you can kind of see that there are a lot of features that are going to be, well, unfortunately, added to the list. Um, see if you guys and gals are actually afflicted by this from DirectX 12, FreeSync, down to the portion of the AMD HD 6, or no, 7800 graphics card production for as far as it may fail when it's enabled. Um, but you can definitely see the portions of where things could be going awry. So definitely check this down you'll have this link down below but let's go ahead and get to some really cool charts i think people might, might enjoy this newer format so i went with old school and new school i think this is actually kind of cool i figured out a really cool way to save like the um, i guess the extensions between uh 3d mark and they did an amazing update and i was just like you know what this is what we need to do and as you can kind of see that there's like four screens give or take and let's go ahead and take a better look at the pure overlay you can see what i'm doing here and like right now we're going to be able to digest a little bit more for as far as what's going down for certain scores now the one on the right is our newer driver our 20.11.3 which is coming in pretty well i mean it's not as good as the uh i would like to say some of the performance perks of last one but it's nominal as you can kind of see and we're going to have more of a percentage charts for people they kind of wanted to see that past the numbers because the numbers sometimes can now we're starting off with time spy going into the extreme so 4k because that's like kind of a hot thing right now but as you can, can see right here driver to driver now you can see on the left which is the 20.11.2 so you can see that there are some perks and there are some well cons and i like to think that the 20.11.3 does a really great job of stabilization to have the hardware accelerator on which is the top one and you have your versus versus the hardware accelerator off in the back-to-back -back drivers there's a lot of improvement left to right I like to think that the consistency of 20.11.3 wins and like I'm kind of curious for most people that this isn't working are they falling back to the 20.11.2 or is it like an old school driver you know this comment could help someone else later on figure out like oh man I have this graphics card and this totally happened the rigs of evolution and as well as the screens of evolution as so I'm getting to the benchmarks can always change and that's the point of life having fun and changing uh, but let's go ahead and dive into it now we're going to go into i guess the uh well might as well finish up direct x12 right let's go ahead and go to just the time spy at 1080p how is it performing right now with looking at the top performers for 1080p you can kind of see and one of the core things that i like about utilizing this newer chart system that they kind of got to is they show you your averages your best and what would go around well-rounded at this portion in time i also enjoy the fact that they've laid out the charts so neatly that was one of the bigger things that i always thought was just a big plate of spaghetti except it wasn't delicious but what is delicious is now looking at what is the comparisons now that we see the top chart which again is the 20 not three on the side right over here that 11 month apparently now you know we're in december it's just hilarious we're probably going to get a either a new 2020 software or hopefully a 20.12.1 pretty soon but the performance between the november drivers as you can kind of see two on the left and three on the right and ha uh, basically your hardware accelerator on on the very top and off on the bottom it pretty much slaughters it across the board now yes again off on the very bottom with time spying direct x12 does beast a little bit on the newer recommended portion and if you are still having performance issues i would go back to that driver and just refreshly uh redownload it because if they've recommended it as a newer driver they may have just touched some things up within this newer portion because the 18th is when they are basically saying that this is newly available but it's amd i wouldn't be surprised they'd be like oh yeah this is the newer newer driver we just forgot to update that portion but it's cool now <laughs> anyways moving on always gdu and make sure that you've swept everything so you don't get those crazy installs and i have a video that i can always link at the very end to help anyone that's basically in that situation but to move on before i have a war tornado of information we have basically consumed that 
again, consistency and a little bit of the edge does go to the portion of, well, I'm going to say 20.11.3 for DirectX 12, well, roundedly. So, but what does that speak for the more gaming, well, gamitude on which is DirectX 11, which a lot of games are basically formatted and the industry is basically stapled at as some do taper a little bit into DirectX 12, which we just looked at. So let's go ahead and take a look, shall we? One of the awesome things about this driver is it just kicks butt. When it comes down to driver to driver for DirectX 11 on my card, it aged well, really well. Now again, hardware accelerator on on the very top and off on the bottom and newer driver, which is represented on the right. So let's go ahead and take a look after we just slide down to see some of the performance charts of the hardware accelerator on, which is kind of cool. Definitely like in that whole situation, we can now digest the driver to driver, which basically pretty much slaughters it. I mean, hands down, you're almost over by a, like literally at this point in time, at least a 3% increase from hardware accelerator off and pretty much almost like where it's tippy toed um, around the same with the hardware accelerator on. So you want to run your hardware accelerator on definitely for the DirectX 11 on your rigs 1080p. But like as we go down, we can have some other scores that we can look at. Now, time spy extreme will definitely have its own portions of what's going to end up happening here because time spies directx well 12. now directx 11 comes into extreme and we're starting to see some pretty good performance across the board i mean honestly this driver is not bad i definitely suggest people to install it and i'd like to hear the fan feedback and community feedback of what's going down and i'm taking the more highlighted like a driver at this portion time which is the ha ha surgery accelerator on for as far as on the top and off on the bottom and newer driver on the right as you can see on the left now we have the performance portions of what is well driver to driver back to back well it doesn't seem like the 2011.2 is well winning at this portion but in ultra then there might be a fighting chance what do we have left now with the formula of the charts that I'm supplying, we can see now the newer driver and its performance perks. The higher highlighted driver, as we can see on the left of what is winning with the 20.11.3, which is pretty cool. We scroll down to see some of the performance charts of where the dropouts are located directly within my Radeon 7 car. Now it is coupled with a NVIDIA card, but that's mainly when I was doing more of the, I guess, frame rate off and on. And like, I didn't really get a lot of call for that. Unfortunately, it seemed like a more of like an NVIDIA thing where people had the half, the, the coupled portion of where I was getting it. I know certain people did randomly have selectable points, but they were random cards. So I know that I've dialed that back with just having the hardware accelerator off and on because I feel like that that's the more important portions of what the card's gonna have for the performance besides toggling on in the Radeon adrenaline software and having those like actual free sync moments where you can actually get some pretty cool performance uh, but as we kind of digest the very tail end of this is 4k good well looking toe to toe well it's not too bad now you're gonna have to look at it for as far as the hardware accelerator off in order to get those performance perks and as i should probably be aligning my charts <laughs> You can see them now finally coming into it where the percentage in the percentiles are not that pretty much different. For going for a career cross and cross, you can see the only difference would be the hardware accelerator off where it has the biggest leap for, for as far as performance goes. So in short, as I kind of bounce around from my PlayStation 5 menu, uh, which is the convenient sound in the background, which is subtle. I figured a lot better than the Days Gone music for like more of the technological updates is um, should we install this? I've installed it. I enjoy it. I like it. I can't wait to test out um, the 20.11.2 against the 20.11.3 and future segments for as far as putting it for the enterprise software and then dialing those in and finding the new trifecta because I did that once with the old ones and now we have a lot more software to test out and kind of see what's going down with the creativity of what AMD is doing. The advanced micro technology devices are so cool. but. Uh, with that everyone i think that for as far as direct x11 it definitely wins um you're gonna finally start seeing some really cool 4k more on your direct x12 but with the portion inside of direct x11 it's going to be like so so not as good as where the 1080p apartment it really just punched out a really good score so 
hopefully everyone's enjoyed the new format leave a comment down below if you definitely dug the new chart format i am open to suggestions moving on past what this format is but i kind of want to just digest this for a split second and see if this can't be a nice little home run for everyone uh, but i do appreciate the fan feedback for the community cheers and i will see you guys and gals in the near future you can always like share and subscribe brand new absolutely free helps me out as a creator and if you do today who knows maybe i'll actually make lisa sue and then we can make an upload and i'll be like hey this is lisa sue and it's math holy crap this is actually happening it'd be a great upload right and then she can sign a graphics card and i'll spray paint it gold she doesn't have to give me the lisa sue edition i'll, I'll, I'll make it a lisa sue edition it'd be great it's cool right cool i don't know this video is getting long i'm out late <laughs>